Hello everyone, welcome back to Professor Charu's series of videos on microeconomics. Today we are going to do a series of five short videos that are about the theory of demand and the theory of the consumer. So to remind you where we were, we had developed a theory of the market and the market model. And we had said that the market model is a model of how people interact in markets. So who are these people who are interacting markets? And we came up with this idea of the circular flow. You have households, consumers on one side, and you have firms on the other side. So what happens in the circular flow is that firms acquire inputs from the input market and they take these input and they do something. They hire workers, they hire land, labor, capital, they put it all together and they create outputs. And then they take these outputs, goods and services, and they sell them in output markets. Households are the people who buy these outputs. How do they buy these outputs? Households are the people who are acquiring income by selling inputs. So what happens is we sell inputs such as we uh, work for a wage, uh, we rent out a room in our house, we have stocks and bonds, we'll come to that later, which helps, which, which is given to firms and the firms then use that finance to acquire capital and get inputs and so on. So land, labor, capital, major inputs sold here, we use them to acquire income and wealth, come to wealth effects in macro in particular sell them to firms. Firms in turn take that, convert that to output. So the supply curve, remember that everybody's interacting in markets. The supply curve in output markets is based on this piece of decisions by firms. How much input do I want to buy? How do I convert that into output and how much output do I want to sell at a particular price? Right. The demand curve is determined by households in a parallel fashion. How much wages, uh, how much profit, how much interest rent am I earning? How do I use that and use that to buy goods and services? Right. So both groups are interacting and they are both interacting in two different kinds of markets, an input market and an output market. So we're going to start with the assumption that both markets are similar. Now this is actually a pretty major assumption and it's the source of a lot of controversy in economics. Most of us agree that the market for milk and the market for apples may probably work the way the standard model works. Many of us have very deep doubts about whether the labor market and financial markets work that way. Right? But the standard model is going to assume all markets work that way and neither of these groups are directly interacting with each other and they're only going to interact in these markets. So that was the set of assumptions behind and just a small slice of the assumptions. There was free entry and exit, perfect knowledge, rational, you know, so a, a whole bunch of assumptions in the market model that we, uh, that you saw when we looked at it. 
But what we are interested in for this segment is this part of the story, right? the household decision. And we're going to drill down a little bit further. So the household is making decisions and that's what we're focusing on, which is on the demand curve and uh, in output markets. And as it happens, when we come to input markets, the supply curve in input markets because households are the people supplying labor, right? Let's focus just on this idea, right? So the first thing that we're going to drill down on is that if you go back to very early in our discussion of economics, we talked about efficiency. And we remembered efficiency was just one goal of economics, but a lot of people pay attention to it. They think it's very important. And we start distinguishing between productive efficiency, that you're not wasting resources, and allocative efficiency, that the outputs you produce are actually the ones that people need. So for example, you can produce a ton of porn without wasting resources. Make it really cheap, make it really efficient, make sure that the cost is the, the, the sort of lowest you can get. But we may have questions about, is that where we want our resources to go? You may be able to produce oil really cheaply with fracking. But we may have questions about whether that is where we want our resources to go. So when we come to efficiency, we really have to think about both productive efficiency cheapest way to produce things and allocative efficiency best use of my resources in relation to the economy is that where I want it to go in economics when we talk about markets we often are saying markets are efficient because they do both and this is a very interesting question how do you know they do both a subset of economists, not the entire profession by any means, but a subset of economics argues that we know it's allocative efficiency because it reflects utility. So what they're saying is in order to know if it is allocative efficiency, you need a theory of the consumer. You need a theory of the household. You need a theory that says, are households making decisions in a way that sends the resources to the, rest, uh, to the right place? Right? If they don't send it to the right place, they're making bad decisions. Hmm, that's one thing. But if the households are making good decisions, then we should not interfere. Which means, in order to address this question of allocative efficiency, we need a theory of consumer choice. How are consumers making a decision to buy output? Because the output and therefore the resource use is going to go where the consumers put their money. Right? So that is a very deeply, interestingly, philosophical question. How do I assess the choices that individual households make in terms of whether or not they are the best choices that people should be making? In economics, the theory that argues individual, individual choice. So the first thing is we started moving away from the household where we can at least think about multiple agents and players, you know, families, kinship, children, to the individual. And we are going to argue the individual makes rational choices. 
And by rational, we mean that each individual maximizes this interesting thing called utility. And once you introduce this word, you've got a ton of questions of psychology and philosophy at play. All right? Utility sounds so nice. It sounds useful, right? People are rational. They maximize their utility. Right? Very nice words. You are rational. You choose the best options, which is useful for you. Except that's not actually what we mean. By utility, we really just mean whatever you want. So you can replace this word utility with desire. Utility is not what's useful. Utility is what you desire. And it might be that in a social sense, childcare is what's useful, but what you desire is more Netflix. <laughs> so the issue really has to do with how we understand utility as a form of desire and how we understand human psyche in relation to how people make choices. Sometimes this model is called Rash X, rational, you know, rational man. Sometimes people call him Homo. Homo economicus, the economic man, the guy who makes choices that are rational based on utility. Remember that everyone is out for themselves. Everyone is basically maximizing their own utility, subject to their resources. Everyone has their own desires. And the role of the market and the role of uh, how the market works is simply to align those through an institution. So depending on whether or not you find homo economicus to be either a good description of how people actually operate and there is a whole field of uh, economics which works with sociology and psychology behavioral economics that asks the question when we look at actual behavior of human beings in experimental situations is this what they do so that's one thing how realistic is this is this how people behave Second, how do you modify this? We know that people are often, for example, altruistic. If all that was happening was that, for example, unpaid labor of women, mothers were maximizing their own desires subject to constraint, you have to ask the question, why do so many mothers desire things for their children? Why do people sacrifice for others? So you have to think of altruism, you have to think of social norms, you have to think of how advertising can change your desires and make you maximize in ways right, that, that drive your resources in one area and not another. Right? So you have to both start thinking about whether this is realistic and B, whether this is a good way, even if this is true, to think that markets do efficiency, allocative efficiency, sending the resources to the places that are best. Well, for a lot of economists, markets do this well because the purpose of the economy is to send the resources to the places people want. Not my place to judge. You do you. If you want to spend your money this way, that's great for you. If you want to spend your money that way, that's great for you. Not my role, not anybody else's role to tell you. That's one model. Another model is to say, well, there's something really weird about this when you think of, for example, consequences for others, intergenerational conflicts, questions of the environment and ecology, where I don't want to say you do you. I want to say, uh, Consider that when you are buying your third car, maybe there's going to be a consequence for the environment. 
Consider that when the resources get diverse, diverted into oil and fracking, there may be consequences for healthcare and for future agricultural production and so on. So it's a really fraught question about whether basing our idea of the purpose of policy and efficiency should be based on homo economics. This is one of the biggest debates in philosophy and elsewhere. Right? But that is what we mean when we say markets are efficient. And that is our theory of how markets work. So our next two videos are going to just go through the details of the decision making process that rational choice when individuals maximize their utility subject to constraints, when homo economicus is making decisions. So two videos on decision making following.